done. Next, also very important, so the school's name and then also is your name and passport number on the contract and are they correct, are they spelled correct? And that's very important because a lot of times, um, especially in a country like China or Korea or Japan, where they don't use the same writing system, they have their own writing systems, right? It's not the same letters like ABC that we have in English. So there, it's very important that your name is spelled correctly. And that is for um, visa purposes, right? Because you need to take this contract usually to the embassy um, of that country to then get your work visa. So you need to really 100% make sure that your name is spelled correctly, that it's also the same as it is in your passport, also the same order. Some countries, they, they um, do like last name first and then um first name middle name or some countries they don't have any middle names like in korea they don't really do middle names so they're they might be confused like what what is the second name so you need to make sure that it's really in the correct order and written on a contract and also your passport number and your citizenship nationality is correct so this is an example of a job contract in korea and here it clearly says um employment agreement. Uh, so this agreement has been made on this day between, um, this would be the school name. So ABC College, for example, with its principal office at, and then the address, and then, or is this your name? I forget. Oh no, and here, and this would be your name. For example, Linda Dunsmore is citizen of, and then they would write the country, passport number. And now you're gonna feel like, why is your passport number on the contract? But it's very important, like I said, for visa purposes. So you might think like, this is weird. Why do they ask for my passport information? Why do they ask for my passport number? But it's very normal because they need to know that to prepare your documents for your visa. So that's not a red flag if they ask for your passport number. And then typically there'd be a section of personal information. So your name and make sure you spell it like it is spelled in your passport. It's very important. And the date of birth and here again, citizenship. So is your nationality indicated and is it correct? And is your passport number correct? And like I said, is your name also spelled correctly? There should not be any errors in there. And also just the order of your name should be correct okay are there any questions until here am i confusing <laughs> i don't think i am but um it's very basic stuff in the beginning so um i just want to make sure everybody understands what i'm talking about and it, we're all on the same page so just let me know <laughs> please like i always say feel free during this live at any time to leave a comment to ask a question I really like engaging. And if I don't hear from any anyone for a longer time, I get kind of nervous. I'm like, do it make sense? Um, or, you know, <laughs> I don't know. But let me know what you think. And then I'm gonna move on. <laughs> but yeah. This is pretty much like a standard, like beginning of a contract for pretty much anywhere. So this is Korea, but it's usually the same for any country. Obviously, and also sort of a disclaimer, like every contract is kind of different. Um, they don't all look the same. They're not all gonna look like this exactly, but um, pretty much they're all kind of similar, right? Thank you guys. So Nesman said we're good. Faraz, all clear so far. Great. Thank you so much for your feedback. I appreciate it. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just like me talking to my computer. So it's like, um, you know, is everything good on your end? So thank you for your feedback. I appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching. We are ITTT, the leading provider for TEFL and TESOL training courses. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking the button down here and click on any of the videos here on the left for more interesting teaching tips for getting certified to teach English abroad and online.